So, hello everybody. Uh, here I am with Dan Short, a clinical psychologist, executive director of the Milton H. Erickson Institute of Phoenix, and author of several books about short-term therapy and brief therapy. Hello, Dan. Hello. How are you? I'm doing very good, thank you. Okay. Are you ready for our interview? Yes, of course. Uh, what would you like to ask? So I would like to ask, um, to talk about um, a relationship, because in your web website, I found a very interesting um, sentence about the relationship, therapeutic relationship, a very interesting definition. You say, I quote, um, therapy is a collaborative relationship designed exclusively to meet the needs of the client. That's beautiful. What do you mean? Well, in, in a way, here it's uh, part of the law. Uh, by law, you have what they would call a fiduciary relationship, which means the, the purpose of the relationship and everything that's done within the relationship must be designed to meet the needs of the client. Okay. So like if you have an accountant that's got a fiduciary relationship with the person coming for accounting, you, you can't make money yourself off their funds. It, everything you do with their money should be to serve their best interest. Uh, same with like attorneys and, and lots of uh, people with have these uh, sort of privileged positions in people's lives. It's going to be a fiduciary relationship, which means everything you do in the context of that relationship should be uh, aimed at meeting their needs in some way. And so for me as a therapist, if I think this way, uh, that psychologically everything I do must be in service of the needs of the person in front of you, uh, it really helps orient you to um, how to be as effective as possible, even if you're saying a little joke or where you're gesturing for them to sit in your office or if you're quiet or uh, how you sit, if you're leaning forward, leaning back. If you're constantly in your mind thinking, does this meet the needs of the patient in some way, it keeps you sort of laser focused on, on uh, how to create a therapeutic advantage from this get coming together of two people. And for me, uh, that, is, that is really the sole responsibility of the therapist. Hmm. And this is sort of a big point because uh, sometimes people will come in, especially for I do hypnosis. Yeah. And so people come in and they, they, they say, I can't make myself stop smoking or I can't make myself stop being angry. Can you use hypnosis to make me change in some way and when they're asking that question embedded in that is the idea that i'm going to give up on making me do things differently i'm going to sort of give up on being responsible even for what i'm doing mm. and put that burden on you and so now you can try to make me quit smoking or you can try to make me be less angry or something and if as a therapist you buy into that idea you're in a, a, a no-win scenario, uh, and uh, doesn't matter how much hypnosis you use, you, you're not going to get anywhere. And so, one of the things that I learned early on from Milton Erickson is that he believed one of the first things you do in therapy, as you're talking to the person, and you're asking, "What do you want to be different?" Mm -hmm. or "What do you want from your session today?" That question is intended to shift the burden of responsibility back to the patient. So the patient recognizes if anything's going to happen, I have to make it happen. I have to do the choosing. I have to do the, uh, the follow through. All of this is it's burden. The burden of responsibility for change should always be on the patient. So if that's the case, what is your burden of responsibility? What is it as a therapist that you must make happen or that you must do right? Where's your skill? Mm. And that goes to me back to the fiduciary relationship. You're responsible for the, re the environment that's created in the office, the relational context that develops. Is it a healthy relationship? Is it respectful? Is it uh, uh, collaborative? Uh, is it uh, reciprocal, whether uh, characterized by cooperation? Yeah. All these healthy dynamics. I believe that as an expert, that's what we must be able to do and do very well. This is very interesting. It's very Ericksonian, of course. Um, yeah. You you study a lot of uh, Milton Erickson um, books, Milton Erickson works, 
and um, uh, you also wrote um, uh, several books about Milton Erickson works, uh, influenced by Milton Erickson works, or specifically about Milton Erickson works. Uh, we have something also in, uh, in Italian, very interesting. Um, what are for you, I have two questions, uh, from a side, what are for you uh, some important skills? Reading uh, Milton Erickson books, what are uh, for you some uh, important skills that Milton Erickson developed to uh, help to build an um, uh, alliance with the client? And uh, the other question is, how is it possible to make a good alliance, a good relationships, even in a few sessions, maybe even in one session? We know that many cases of Milton Erickson, many uh, documented cases um, um, were treated in just one session. So how is it possible? Because, you know, many theories, many different approaches uh, on psychotherapy uh, say that it's a, you need many sessions to um, to, to build a therapeutic relationship, but often uh, that's not true. It often just one session, just a few minutes are, um, yeah. are okay to do that. Yeah, yeah, and I think we can understand this better if instead of thinking of it as a technique, which is really sort of a superficial way of looking at things, mm -hmm. uh, if you think of it more as, I mean, because maybe a uh, uh, here in the United States, when we, we uh, feel like someone's not being sincere or authentic, we might compare them to the uh, profession of selling used cars. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's a lot of these individuals selling used cars in America that pride themselves on being able to lie or trick people or manipulate them. And at first they're very friendly and they're hugging you and they're asking all these questions. They have all these techniques that they're using, but there's not a lot of uh, genuineness and authenticity mm. there. And there's certainly not any care for the person that maybe they're trying to take advantage of and, and you know take you know, sell the car for more money than it's worth and so when i say that techniques you don't want to be like a used car salesman uh instead uh you want it to be uh more a part of what is natural for humans and what we naturally do so imagine that you were um uh on a on a uh a hike or something with some strangers you don't know any of them but there's some sort of mudslide or something and you're swept away and uh, you think you're going to die and uh, you're trying to climb survival and there's this other person that's next to you and you pull one another out of the river and you, you cling to a tree and maybe you're only with each other for three or four hours uh, during this event, but you have this profound connection to one another that potentially lasts you for like the rest of your life. And there, there wasn't a technique that took place, there was just uh, the the experience itself was so emotional and so important what was happening you're trying to struggle for survival and you're trying to help one another and so the same it is with conversation between two people you go to a cocktail party and you're just discussing events or something and the, the, the chatter is meant to just to be fun and lighthearted you're not going to experience any real bond or connection to that person but uh, you have a conversation that say lasts for 60 minutes but during the 60 minutes you're talking about this thing that someone's never told anyone else and it feels like life or death and maybe they're even questioning whether or not they're uh, they should continue to exist on this planet and and then you show uh, a heightened interest in that and you're reaching out an arm to try and help them and uh, everything they say and do really seems to matter to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be uh, quite a, quite an experience. Yeah. So, so one of the first skills is being able to create a setting when you're talking with someone that they feel safe, secure, uh, and that they can tell you anything that they can trust you, uh, so that they'll go to really deep places inside of themselves.